Hi everyone, welcome back to Sudhu's Ortho Talks. Today's discussion will be on a common test which is a must know both for the undergraduates and postgraduates for clearing their examination and to understand the basics in hip pathology. That is the Klingenberg test. This is the normal anatomical standing position and to understand the Klingenberg test better, concentration has to be given to both the lower limbs, especially the pelvic structure. Now an enlarged image of the pelvis with both lower limbs. Consider this red triangle as the pelvis and both the upper corners as the anterior superior iliac spine. Consider the both upper corners as anterior superior iliac spines when seen from the front or posterior superior iliac spines when seen from the back. Commonly, Trillenberg test has to be done from the back, but for better understanding, I describe this test as examining from the front and hence I have marked both the upper corners as anterior superior iliac spine. These two structures are the femoral bones with the hip joint and these two structures are the tibial bones or the leg part. These two brown arrows on both sides which extend from the pelvis to the greater trochanteric region of the femur are the hip abductor muscles that is formed by the gluteus medius and minimus of which the major part is held by gluteus medius. So now these are the common structures which you have to remember to understand this Trillenberg test better. Now when a patient or an individual is standing on both legs, the pelvis is level and the tension in the abductor muscles of both sides are the same. Now, when the patient is asked to stand only on one leg, what happens is, there is a risk of falling of the entire body towards the unsupported side and this might result in an unstable stance position or an unstable gait position. So to avoid falling during stance and during gait, the abductor muscle of the stance side contracts and lifts the opposite pelvis so that the opposite unsupported anterior superior iliac spine and posterior superior iliac spine are elevated either to the level or slightly higher thereby balancing the pelvis and maintaining the patient or the individual in upright position especially during the time of single leg stance. This is the normal physiology which happens to prevent falling and to have a stable gait. How does this happen? There is a fulcrum or the hinge joint on which the pelvis rotates. There is a lever arm which supports this fulcrum. And last but not the least, there is a power which drives this entire mechanism. Now coming to the anatomical parts of these three structures, the fulcrum is formed by the hip joint over which the entire pelvis and the opposite lower limb rotates. The lever arm which supports this fulcrum is the neck of femur and the power which drives the entire mechanism is provided by the hip abductor muscles that is gluteus medius and minimus. Now whenever there is a problem in either the fulcrum or the lever arm or the power, this mechanism is lost and the patient will have a Trendelenburg test positive in which the side of the pelvis which is unsupported dips 
known. And that is called positive fundamental test. Now, what are the causes of positive fundamental test? The most common and simple mnemonic to remember the causes of positive fundamental test is B B B B M. Remember this B B B B M. I'll explain this in the next slide. Now coming back to the same picture of fulcrum, lever arm and dumbbell, you remember the mnemonic B B B B M. The first two B B comes in fulcrum at the hip joint. The first B stands for dislocation in which the head of the femur comes out of the scapula, and the second B is destruction of the femur which might be because of some humerus process or ineffective process. So both dislocation and destruction will destroy the hip joint or the fulcrum resulting in a positive fundamental test. The next two letters are BB. This BB stands in lever arm or the neck of femur. The first B is bending. Otherwise, the orthopedic condition is called coxa vara. And the second B stands for break. That is a non moving of neck of femur. So, in coxa vara and non moving of neck of femur, the lever arm that supports the hip joint is defective, resulting in a positive fundamental test. The last M is muscle paralysis. What muscle? Again, the hip or pectoral muscle paralysis. Various causes can cause or pectoral muscle paralysis, including local muscular causes, spinal causes, or cranial or central causes. So, any cause which causes paralysis of the hip or pectoral muscle can result in power failure, leading to positive fundamental test. So, the Defect in fulcrum at the hip joint, lever arm or the neck of femur, or power or hip abductors will result in dipping down of the pelvis in the unsupported side, resulting in a positive fundamental test. Hope you understood this test better. Wait for more videos. Thank you.